of nature's most volatile elements is the weather. It changes constantly, and what better way to remember or feature its facts than with a bullet journal? So I am a bullet journal addict. This is my journal, and I take it with me everywhere. One of the important things about a bullet journal is to make sure that you have all the supplies you need, and I need to be able to keep all of my supplies in this little pouch. So you can see it just has room for some pens, maybe a water brush, a little ruler, but that is what I can fit in here. So that's one of the reasons I decided to limit myself to black and white. And now if we look at the little example page that I have right here, you can see everything here is in black and white and really important when you have a bullet journal, you wanna make sure that the ink is not gonna leak through to the next page, right? Cause that makes the backside unusable. So let's take a little look at my week in weather. You can see through the drawings that I've tried to show you what the weather's like. Monday it was rainy, Tuesday it was still rainy, Wednesday it was cloudy during the day, rained at night, High of 66, low of 44, 65 and sunny on Thursday. Friday, more clouds and rain. Saturday, finally a little bit of sun. And finally, the wind was blowing on Sunday. So you can see it was a pretty unpleasant week and yet it's still a beautiful page. So to make a page like this in your own bullet journal, what you're gonna do is take a circle stencil. And I love a stencil that has a lot of different choices. Then again, you wanna use a black pen that's not gonna leak through. I am gonna use a fine tip pen to do these circles because they're just the basic outlines. I'm gonna eyeball something that's kind of in the center for that first circle and then I'm gonna continue around just putting down seven different circles. So I would just continue around adding my circles of different sizes. There's no right or wrong, it's whatever you want. Once you've done all the circles, you're gonna use lines to connect them. I suggest using the edge of your stencil as a ruler and most bullet journals have this sort of dot grid, so you can even use the dots as a little bit of a guide to tell you how to line that up. And then each day of the week, all you need to do is do one doodle. It takes like 10 minutes maybe to fill them in. It's super fun. So let's go through a couple ideas for designs. So I have one here, and as you can see, it starts with a circle. And then what I want to do is I want to use a bold line, but this tip on this pen is not large enough to do that bold line. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to size up to a larger brush. Can you see how much larger this pen is? So that allows me to now make my very bold, right, teardrop, not a teardrop, a raindrop. Then I'm gonna switch back to the small pen to go ahead and fill in my text. Don't worry about your handwriting. Everybody has a little bit of a problem with their handwriting, but it's something that's so personal and so you. So the next step once you've done that is again, I wanna use that big brush and I wanna take the time to color this in. Notice how I'm holding my pen. Okay, I'm holding it way at the back. My hand is not choked up here, I'm way at the back, and I'm sort of using the side of that brush. And that's what's allowing me to color this in really, really quickly. Now, if you're messy and you make a small thing where you go outside the line, don't worry. Because this is a brush tip, you can then use the very tip of it just to smooth out anything you did and no one will ever know that you went out of the lines. But isn't life all about coloring outside the lines sometime? Then the next thing is, as nice as this is, it's a little bit plain. So now we're gonna go ahead and add in some white pen. So white pens come in lots of different tip widths. And actually, I don't know if you can tell by looking at this one that's finished, but I actually use three different tip sizes. You can see that the white goes from very small to very fat. And I like that look, I like the variation. So I'm starting right here and just going around. And you can see how easy this is. It's just doodling. There's no right, there's no wrong. And then you can change the next tip size. This is gonna be slightly thinner. Check that out. Now this is a gel pen, so that's why it coasts right across the top so easily. It really is great for making all these little white details that pop right off the page. And you'll notice that over that black, even this really skinny one, 
is super opaque. And the thing about doodling that's so fun is if you want to go and change something or you wanna go back, you absolutely can. So now I've just picked up the thicker pen to finish up the last of those lines. And you can see how easily my rainy day story comes together. But I've got another one that I wanna show you. So this one looks kinda complicated. We're looking at Monday here, and it may look a little hard, but it's not at all. Again, I like to start with a smaller tip just to draw my general cloud area here. And remember, clouds are imperfect, so don't worry about getting it perfect or anything like that. Then all I did is just add some lines to give it a little bit of shape. And you can even see I'm running into things here over the line, and if you look at this one, it's a mess. Totally fine. That's when you wanna use your medium size pen. Because what you're gonna do with the medium size pen is you're just gonna fix that. Remember how we fix the edge? Just by bringing in that slightly fatter line and then maybe turning some of these into curly cues. And that's another reason I love that brush edge because you get that really cool fat and thin, fat and thin, depending on how much pressure you use. So that once you have something that looks like this, and you can see I even went around the circle an extra time just to make sure that that was nice and clean, I can switch back to my really fat brush and go ahead and color that all in. Isn't that neat? And again, coloring is so easy, and do try holding your pens in different positions, because if you choke up too much on it, I feel like you're not relaxed and sort of breathing into the zen of doodling. So then we are ready to create all of our fun little stripes and dots and all that kind of stuff. So I think, I'm gonna use a thicker one for this, but my raindrops are coming at an angle because that is what the rain felt like to me. It felt like it was coming from every direction. I think that drawings are meant to be really personal. So don't ever be afraid that, you know, your interpretation of something is wrong. That's what's wonderful about art. It's you telling people what you see in the world. And you can see that when I finish all of these little tiny things up, and this is not hard drawing, right? It's super easy, but it's by combining so many of them, if we look back at the finished one, you can see that these are absolutely beautiful and certainly inspiration for stamps or even larger art that you might make. But this is a great way to doodle every single day and record your life by recording the weather. So I hope you'll give this project a try in your bullet journal.